So here I have three brand new 2B pencils. Sit them on this rack here where it's safe to burn them. Turn our gas on. Get into here today, so let's make my fire. I'm going to burn all the wood off these pieces so I can get the leads out from in the middle. So finished burning, I should have some charcoal and some pencil leads. Alright, it's been about probably two minutes since I started burning with the torch. I did help things along a bit more after I um, stopped the video with the torch a bit more. As you can see here, we've got at least one good long full pencil lead. So I've got two full ones, and I'm guessing that one had a crack in it. Yeah, when you sharpen your pencil and the end just keeps falling off every time you sharpen it, that's because they're already cracked inside. Just like that one was. So once that cools down a bit, I can grab those leads out and we can go and make some batteries. Okay, I have a meter here set to ohms. And it's clamped straight across the single pencil lead. So you can see we have just under 5 ohms of resistance. And it does matter if you look closely you'll see some black stuff on some of these leads that's some leftover carbon residue from the pencils uh, the ones I've got it does seem to be a bit plasticky and it helps to get that off so I'll be using this old green kitchen scourer to scrap them up nice and clean I did have to jiggle the electrodes around and sort of scratch the clamps in a bit to get a good reading if I move one so it does get worse. Okay, you can see down there little lines that the clamps made when I twisted the elect what's going to be the electrode around in there. So here I have my pencil lead, just a short piece. There's the full length there. And I'll put a little bit of paper towel around it, just a couple of layers, and then some aluminium foil. I haven't added any electrolyte yet, that paper towel is dry. Uh, we are getting just over 0.6 of a volt, which is well and truly enough to run a small block of oscillator. I will just check the humidity for you. Our room humidity is at 31%. Now, so you can see that is dropping off. Oh, it's moving around. Let's check the amps. So I'll set that to microamps because I'm not expecting a heap here with the dry paper towel. We're getting nanoamps, but it is going up. 450 nanoamps, 460, 470. So it's a load reactive cell at the moment when it's dry. We just hit 60 and it's dropping back a bit, so I've probably found about the maximum threshold for it there with a dry. Oh, small climb. Anyway, I have here some alum solution. And it's way past maximum dissolve rate. It does actually get sediment on the bottom if I let it sit for a while. I've been giving it a good shake. I'm just going to stick my finger in there. You can see the amps are still climbing slowly. 
I'm just going to add just one drop to that paper towel. Oh, and look at those amps going up. We're now delivering hundreds of microamps. That's a whole degree of magnitude, straight up, from one drop of alum solution. If you don't have alum, I'm sure salt water would probably work pretty well too. I'll be trying that in a moment. So I'm just going to check that voltage now while those amps are still skyrocketing up there. Well, and truly enough to run many oscillators now. Well, that was still got about the same voltage. You know, that appears that's dropping when we're not drawing any amps. Let's just bring in a second meter here. This one is currently set to the 2000 microamp range. Let's hook the negative side up. We yeah, can see we have amp draw. Our voltage has dropped, but it is now climbing as the amps go up. So I'm just going to grab it. So I'll go and grab a timer. Sorry about that. As you can see, we're still climbing. There's our amp draw. That's in microamps. So we're up to 70, 80 microamps. And our voltage is still, short circuit voltage is climbing. So let's start the timer. And I'll make a salt water one and we'll come back and check things in about 15 minutes. Okay, it's been five minutes nearly since I started the test on this little alum, alfoil and pencil lead cell. Five minutes, there you go. Our amp drawer is still climbing. Oh, that's our voltage, sorry. So we're up to nearly 18 millivolts. That's with it short circuited and delivering 170 microamps, and that's still going up a bit, I think, where it was a moment ago. Well, I finally just started dropping off. So, let's just disconnect and see what happens to that voltage. Disconnected. Well, and look at that shoot up. When we're not, no longer shorting the amps out. So, putting a load across it definitely did something. It almost appears to be climbing in its own kind of bouncy way. Let's chuck this one back on. Let's see what happens. We go pretty much straight back to the performance it had before. Okay. Well, that five minutes has been ticking past. I made a second cell. This one's still dry. So let's check her out. I'll ditch this cell for a minute. Yeah. Let's just check the voltage first. Positive on the carbon side. Make sure my voltmeter is attached. And negative on the aluminium side. And straight away, with nothing added, we've got about 250 millivolts. And interestingly, the amp draw on this other one's gone up without the impedance of the multimeter interfering. And this is a very high impedance meter there, so that's very interesting. Let's take that one off. Down there. Let's see what happens when we try and draw a load from that. It appears that that is too much, too fine an amount of power for that meter to be able to read. 
That's set to microamps, so that would be the 100 nanoamps range there after the decimal place. Nothing. All right, so while I've been waiting, I mixed up some salt water with some hot tap water, and then I threw two ice until it wouldn't dissolve anymore. I threw in two ice cubes to cool it back down again so it didn't have hot water. And it's now quite cold. So I'm just going to stick my finger in like I did before and just add a drop. Oh, and look at that. Salt water's a winner. We're getting over a volt there. Or about a volt. Let's see what happens when we try and draw a current from that. Well, and it's off that scale. We're now in the 20 milliamps range. So it's showing 800 microamps there. And our voltage drop when short circuited isn't quite so severe as with the alum. So I'd say the salt water's the go with this. That was just um, rock salt out of a packet. So not iodized, just regular sea salt in crystal form, dissolved in water. And look at that, we're getting over a milliamp now. And that's still winding up. So I'm going to have a bit of a play around and see what I can do with these things. Alright, so I just put the two different cells in series. That's the little alum electrolyte cell. And that is the salt water one. Now, that alum's looking a little bit dry, but we're getting 1.5 volts across there. So, let's have a look at the amps. Just take that one on that end. That one on that one on that end. And I must have got my leads around the wrong way. But we're getting a bit over 250 microamps there. So, I think that might run this little clock. Let's see if it will. There's my positive lead. There's my negative lead. Oh, look at that. Just runs the little clock. And with the clock on there, we're still showing over 1.3 volts. Seems to be climbing. Look at that. It's the cheapest clock battery you'll ever find. Not even the full lead from a whole pencil and a couple of little scraps of foil that you could take off your sandwich at lunchtime or something. Voltage is going up, not down. Don't know how long it'll keep doing that for. I'd imagine days to weeks before it actually starts to go flat. Um, it will eventually eat away the aluminium, but it's not a lot of foil there. So, if you have an old pencil and a bit of foil and you need a little bit of power, that's one of the things you can do. Here I've made up four little tiny individual cells and I've stuck them together with heat shrink, little tiny rings of heat shrink. It's pretty rough, it's pretty flimsy, it's not going to hold together for long. But the important thing is I'm now getting over 3 volts. So I think that shows we can string them in series to a reasonably useful amount. Uh, next I'll be doing a test to see if I can run some in parallel. So here I have taken my four little pencil lead cells that I made, that's one whole pencil there. The lead's broken down into four pieces, individually wrapped in foil, paper towel as I showed before, and then I just stuck them all together side by side with a piece of heat shrink. Left a negative at the bottom and positive at the top in case I wish to stack them later. If you compare that to a double A, it's actually not, it's pretty close. It's only half the volts though, so what you'd really want to do is get a bit neater, make this in two halves, and join it all together with a single piece of heat shrink and you could end up with something that you could jam into a radio or something like that to replace your double A. So what we have here, I'll get on that positive, I did wrap a bit of um, enameled wire around the top there and tinned it all up to try and get a decent connection. That is a bit tricky getting some things to solder to the pencil lead. Where is my negative gone? There it is. So, so I'm just checking the voltage. So we have a good 7.8, sorry, 0.7 of a volt there, 0.8 of a volt as before. And if we add to that, an 
Amps made up. You can see we have much better amp delivery before. That's in the 20 millivolt milliamps range, so we've got 2.2 milliamps there. But that does seem to be dropping off a bit, and my voltage does seem to be climbing. So I don't know why that is. That's an interesting effect. It's doing the opposite to what it was with just single cell behavior. Anyway, let's see how that goes on our little blocking oscillator, which I have. Actually, I took a melted old clip lead and I chopped it up and I soldered it on to make things easy for myself. And for simplicity in these videos. Uh, it's still hard one-handed, but I'll stick that on there. We can see we have some light. And that's now lighting up that little LED. Probably to 50%. These ones don't go real bright. It's pretty good. There's two volts there coming out of that oscillator. And a couple of milliamps to be able to light the LED that much. Now, what else is interesting, just as a proof of concept to show that you can essentially make two like this and put them in series. And if you're clever, you could most certainly get it into the size of that double A. And there we go. I'm just holding my finger on there to hold that pencil it against that foil. What we'll do, just pinch this lead that I was using on my amp meter a moment ago. I'll stick it on the bottom for you. Ah, get on there, I'll stick it on up there where I can grab a bit. And you can see we do have improved brightness for our extra voltage, as well as our extra amp delivery. There you have it. You can make a battery for a reading light that should theoretically last a few months, at which point you'll need to change the foil. I will be doing some run tests on these and doing some updates when they die. A um, couple more tests to come. Stay tuned. Okay, so I'm about halfway to completion on my little AA replacement here. Um, there's the first half of the cell. That'll give me 0.8 of a volt. Hopefully a few amps. I don't know if you can see well there. I've got four pencil leads, each individually wrapped in paper towel and then foil, dipped in my salt water solution over here, and then I wrapped foil around the whole lot of the foil part and some heat shrink to hold it all together. I have four more of my little individual cells here. Um, I do have a caliper gauge, they should measure hopefully about between 13 and 15 millimetres long, which means that they're going to fit nicely inside my battery. What's going on here? Okay, if we zero that, there we go. So, as you can see, oh, and I've made a grievous mistake. Oh well. And battery's about 45 to 50 millimetres. Little cells, definitely going to fit. Oh, I've done it right there. there 21 millimetres ish. Ish. They are a little bit different, different amounts of foil on the bases, but that's close enough. Uh, my finished cell here is about the same, 21 millimetre sort of. Yeah. 21, 22 millimetres. Right, um, I've got two cells running here quite nicely. Rigged up a couple of little oscillators. Um, this one's actually a PMP type transistor. And very unbiased coil, as you can see there. I've got about 17 turns, I think, and about 170. Now, uh, the 170 is going to the collector, which will be very, very negative. Before I put the LED on there, I did check it. I was getting spikes of over 10 volts negative and 2.5 volts positive on the base. So, 
I think that's actually getting brighter. I've got a feeling it might be throwing some charge back into that battery. We'll eventually go flat, but it's going to take a really long time, I think. Uh, this one here, not quite as bright. Both of these you'd be able to make a little book reading lamp though, provided you are right, I'm too bright here. If you're right over the page in a dark room, you'd be able to read a novel. Just. Two of them you'd do alright. You'd have one on each page. Um, you can use smaller toroids too, of course. There's a, another one I prepared earlier. So anyway, I'm going to get back to um, finishing off this cell. I'm nearly there. Okay, so I'm just about here with my double A replacement. As you can see, I have my two 0 0.8 cells there. Then once they go in series, they give me one and a half volts, just like this double A here. And I've got this piece of heat shrink to stick it all together with. Yeah, you know, I'm almost. Only if I had only put three of them in there, oh gee, I'd nearly go, nearly do a triple A. Very, very nearly got right for a triple A, but. I'm going to go for the double A size. It's a bit, it gives me a bit more room to play with. They're a bit skinny. It's a teeny bit short, so I'm going to jam some foil just in between the two, like so, when I heat sink it. I'll be back again soon with the rest. Okay, my little single cell's nearly finished. Double cell, double A. There's an extra double A. As you can see, I probably should have gone for triple A size, I was nearly there, I just ended up a tiny bit long at the end. I was planning to do double A from the start anyhow. So just to show, I could have either stuck some more bits of lead in there and made it fatter, or about what I've got, and a tiny bit shorter and gone for triple A. Anyway, here comes the moment of truth. Hopefully that's not going to break anything. And we're looking on that big meter there. Oh, look at that. We have a double A. Isn't that lovely? Okay, I'm all finished. I ended up shoehorning that little um, cell into this little triple A holder. There's the double A there for size comparison. There's a the triple A. As you can see, it's actually quite bright. I made a um, quickly whipped up a new little jewel thief there. It's a PMP type. Uh, I have my cathode of my LED on the collector and the anode of my LED on the base. And it's a high, amp high voltage amplification type. I have very few winds to the base and a lot of winds to the collector. And that works very well. I'm really happy with that. That's a great little book light. Uh, we have here this inefficient oscillator that I showed you at the start of the video, it's killing batteries pretty quick. It's been about four hours and it's killed pretty much every one of these. Sorry about that. Uh, there we go. You can see the orange one does work. I did have it disconnected because it goes flat in like half an hour. But it keeps going back on again if you let it sit for a few minutes. You can see it going dim there already. It hasn't been sitting long since I pressed before I started recording this. Oh, we've got that cell over there running that oscillator. That's another PMP type. Not bad, it's definitely a bit brighter for the extra amps. Uh, this alum cell here is running this regular type of jewel thief. But I do have still, I've probably got, I don't know, 50 turns going to the base and 250 turns going to the collector on that coil. So amplifying the voltage up to larger spikes milks the amps out of them longer, they don't go flat. I did have this battery here on this oscillator, which as you can see is nearly completely died already. And same result, it goes flat in like half an hour. Like that, that's been going like that for an hour or two now. Well, I've been winding up this core and making these little bat this little battery and everything. So there you have it. I've still got all this pencil lead left over too. I could probably make another triple A out of that. And a few little single cells. So if you have a pencil and some tin foil, uh, you can make a battery that will power a jewel thief. Um, something else I'd just like to demonstrate. If we can get this out of there without breaking anything. Yeah, there might be a problem. 
I did shoehorn it in pretty good. Should put a switch on, hey? There's a thought. Mmm. I'm really stuck. Uh, get out of there, you. Light's well, still on. There we go. Now it's coming. If I hadn't shoved a ball of foil in that to make it longer, to try and make it as long as a triple up double A, you can see that lump there? That's the ball of foil. That would have fitted in there really nicely. Now, one other thing I do want to check quickly. Where did my little clock go? There it is. Stick the positive in there. We should be able to run this clock quite nicely. And there we go, the clock works. Seconds indicator in the middle there appears to be flashing at one second per second, which is what it's meant to do. So there you go. One homemade, triple A, made out of pencil leads, tin foil, and a bit of heat shrink. If you didn't have the heat shrink, you could use sticky tape, or rubber bands, or whatever you had on hand. It doesn't need to be an insulator. It is kind of handy being an insulator, but it doesn't have to be. And if you happen to have a jewel thief, or a low powered 1.5 volt device, two of these would probably run your remote control for your TV. Okay? Probably quite well for a really long time. Uh, if it does go flat, try sticking it in water. How's that for you? Rechargeable batteries that recharge with water. If it did go flat, the salt world crystals will still be in there on the paper from last time. You just need to hydrate it a bit if it went flat. And when it's totally dead, you can cut it apart and take the tin foil out and throw away the rubbish foil that's left and put some new tin foil in there and be new heat shrink and Bob's your uncle, it'll go again. And then use the same old bit of paper towel and same bit of salt that you started with. So there you go. Thanks for watching.